I'm George Tanaka. I'm a fellowship trained glaucoma and cataract surgeon. Um, I practice in San Francisco, California, as well as Oakland, California, very close to the convention. And I've been doing this for 25 years. I also um, co-direct the glaucoma service at California Pacific Medical Center. And then I have my own uh, concierge practice uh, called Tanaka Vision. I think our conceptualization of the drainage system of the eye for many years was very simplified. We just thought of it as a passive drain, you know, that if it was blocked, the pressure went up and that created glaucoma. We know that it's much more complicated than that. The trabecular meshwork, which is the part of the drain that we see, is just the beginning of a very complicated anatomical system to remove fluid from inside the eye back into the circulation. So beyond the trabecular meshwork, we have Schlem's canal, which is a 360 degree circumferential drainage system. And that feeds into a set of collector channels, which eventually feeds into the episcleral venous system. So the way I like to describe it is the trabecular meshwork is really the tip of the iceberg. And most of our treatment modalities, such as SLT, such as stent-based surgeries, even many of the other canal plastic devices really only treat the very beginning of the drainage system. iTrack, in particular iTrack Advance, treats really the entire system. So it improves the outflow facility of the trabecular meshwork, it dilates a, a collapsed Schlemp's canal, and it also removes the herniations blocking the entrances to the collector system. So I think one of the benefits of canal plasty is it can be done as a standalone procedure, but it can also be combined with cataract surgery. And whether you do it before the cataract surgery or after the cataract surgery, that's really surgeon preference, but it's very versatile in that it can be combined and it is covered you know, by insurance currently as a standalone and as a combined procedure. I think the ideal patient is somebody that has mild disease and somebody who is really suffering in terms of quality of life due to having to take many different glaucoma medications on a chronic basis. I think patients with ocular surface disease that's exacerbated by taking all these glaucoma drops are excellent candidates. The beauty of canaloplasty is that it can reduce medication burden and thereby improve quality of life. So reducing the medication burden, I think, is, should be the goal of MIGS procedures in general. And I think canaloplasty is ideally suited because it is truly minimally invasive. I have not yet done repeat canaloplasty in the same patient. However, most of my patients have already had some other type of glaucoma intervention, whether it's a sustained release device, uh, it could be a stent-based procedure. It certainly is probably, I say the majority of my patients have had one, two, even three uh, selective laser trabeculoplasty procedures. So I think that's where it fits into my paradigm, where you have tried most of the non-invasive things first, and now you're looking to take the patient to the operating room to do an invasive procedure. I personally like to perform the minimally invasive procedure first before moving on to more you know, invasive procedures that may disrupt the patient's quality of life. So I'd say intraoperatively, we do see some amount of blood reflux from Schlem's canal through the goniotomy. Um, compared to other procedures though, I think it's the same or perhaps less. You know, with stent-based procedures, we can see a significant amount of bleeding because we've created a, a relatively large opening in Schlem's canal where reflux bleeding can spill over into the anterior chamber. I would say compared to goniotomy, it's certainly much less, both intraoperatively and postoperatively, you know, because the opening to Schlem's canal is much, much smaller with the eye tract catheter.
Well, I've been with canaloplasty since the very beginning. You know, back in 2012, I was performing ab external canaloplasties. Uh, when ab internal canaloplasty came out in about 2017, I was doing those. And then I was also, you know, doing, using the same catheter, but with, uh, you know, trying to feed the catheter with the forceps. So when iTrack Advance came out, I was very happy, very pleased that we had a much, much easier procedure due to the reconfiguration of the catheter and the delivery device. So I'd say the number one thing that I've adopted is, and what, what I've appreciated the most, is the ease of use of the new iTrack Advance. So I think it's very similar to other minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries, such as eye stent or hydrus. We typically see a reduction of a few points, a few millimeters of IOP lowering. But I think even more significant is the medication reduction we get. You know, if we have somebody on one or two drops, it's not uncommon for us to get rid of those drops and improve the patient's quality of life. So I think we have to focus not only on the IOP lowering, but also on the medication reduction with these procedures, particularly with this device. So I'd say the three most important factors would be number one, patient selection. You wanna pick patients with mild to moderate disease who have a high medication burden. I think number two is good visualization of the Schlem's canal during the surgery. And number three, it's a very efficient device. And so you can can cannulate Schlem's canal quite quickly, but when you withdraw the catheter, you wanna make sure you slow down, make sure that you're delivering enough viscoelastic into the system to viscodilate the collector channels. So I'd say proceed slowly as you're withdrawing the catheter and delivering the viscoelastic. Well, I think ergonomically, it's much, much easier to perform canaloplasty with a new iTrack Advanced device. It has a built-in slider that can advance the catheter very efficiently. We've retained some of the excellent features of the old catheter, namely the blunt catheter tip, the guide wire. It feeds very easily into the canal and the visco delivery system that can get, deliver large amounts of viscoelastic that's totally customizable based on the surgeon. So you could do one click, two click, even four to five clicks per clock hour. So that part is very nice as well as the surgeon customization of the viscoelastic delivery.